What is a house? Is a house automatically a home? Is a home automatically a house? Some of us live in huge mansions, big, big, big houses. Some of us live more simply. We live in a space barely big enough for a bed and a desk and a place to meditate maybe. We all take our own path to our own home. I've lived in big houses. I grew up in one. My father was a Wall Street banker, rose to one of the top positions in one of the largest banks in the world. And so he was able to provide for all of us. And then there was the period in my life when I was being schooled and I lived in small dorm rooms, which was just fine. When you live in a small dorm room, you don't spend much time there. You spend more time out and about, and you find places where you can relax and feel at home. To me, there are three elements that make a house a home. Three key elements. The first is trust. The second is safety. And the third is love. Now, trust is elusive. We normally think of trust in relation to another human being. But there's another aspect to trust that we often don't think about. And that is, can we trust ourselves? Can we trust ourselves to do the right thing by us, to do whatever it is that keeps us whole, that keeps us safe from those around us. For many people, the shadow assumes larger and larger dimensions, and even though we might live in a huge mansion, it can feel very lonely if you don't trust yourself. Many people shut themselves in their big homes. And those walls of that big home become a barrier to the outside world. And they grow more and more isolated, fall into patterns of behavior that psychologists might call addictions. It's all a matter of trust. Can you trust yourself? to make yourself whole and the highest and best person that you can be. The second essential element of a home is safety. Safety is, again, elusive because we think in terms of safety in relation to those around us. Are we physically safe from people who might harm us? But safety in a broader sense is more than that. 
safety might have to do with the world view and the way we relate to the world around us. Do we have values and assumptions and perspectives that keep us in a safe proximity to the world around us? And then third and finally, there is the matter of love. Is your home a place of love? Is it filled with a sense that you belong, a sense that you are loved by those people around you? Love can take many forms. Often we perceive love through the art or through the written word. Or maybe love is simply a matter of wanting to sit quietly with someone reading a good book. Whatever it is, the home is the place where we need to feel as though what is around us is true and honest. There's a lot of talk today in America about freedom. John in the Bible says the truth will set you free. And yet in America today For many, it's maybe the home of the brave, but it's not the land of the free because people are caught in deception, self-deceptions and deceptions of the company they work for and even the government that purport to manage the affairs of state in an open and forthright manner. These are all deep and often unsettling questions. And I offer no answers here. I just suggest that for each of us, we need to follow our own path, follow our own footsteps. And hopefully they lead us to a place of trust, safety, and love.